Hi, in this video, I'm gonna be solving this problem, which asks to find the local maximum of a function that's defined as an integral. The problem says, given fx is equal to that integral, at what value of x does the local max of fx occur? And the integral is from zero to x of a complicated fraction involving t dt. All right, so before I even solve this, I want to explain what's going on with that function f. When you take what's called a definite integral, meaning an integral with a and b limits like that, and let's say the function is g of t dt, let's say that if the antiderivative of little g is a capital G, it will be a function of t, right? So the whole thing is g of t, and the way it's commonly written is a vertical line here with an a here and a b there, these same limits, a and b. And what you do is you plug in the b, you get g of b, and you plug in the a, you get g of a, and you subtract them. What you should notice here is that after you plug in the b and the a, there's no more t in the answer. So the integral is with respect to t, the antiderivative has t, but after you plug in the limits of the definite integral, the t is gone, there's no more t. So imagine that this is the function g of t and the antiderivative of it is some sort of capital G of t. So the whole thing is equal to the function capital G of t from the lower limit to the upper limit from zero to x. And so after you've plugged it in, the t is gone. But because the upper limit is the variable x, you end up with a function of x. That's why it's f of x. Even though the integral is with respect to t, we end up with a function of x because it enters through this limit here. All right, let's now try to solve this problem. It says to find the local max of f x. How can you figure out where the local max of a function is? Well, a local max would be either this one or this one, where f prime is equal to zero or f prime is undefined. Great, but also f prime is also zero or undefined at the local min. So how do you distinguish the two? Well, some people go into a second derivative test, right? But an easier way is, what's the difference between min and max based on these two graphs? Well, because the graph is oriented in different direction, right? For a max, the graph is increasing and then it's decreasing. Go up first and then down, that's the highest point. Whereas if you go down first and then you go back up, that's the bottom of the pit. Well, when you go up, the derivative is positive. And when you go down, the derivative is negative. Go up, f prime is positive. Go down, f prime is negative. So in order to find a local max, it sounds like I need to find the derivative of this function f, just the first derivative. I don't need the second derivative. And then figure out where it is positive and where it's negative. I need f prime of x. And I need to check its signs. Where is it positive? Where is it negative? And where is it zero? All right, derivative of f, d dx of fx. And fx is the whole integral, so it's d dx of the whole integral. dt. Whenever you see the derivative of an integral, always think fundamental theorem of calculus. In particular, the fundamental theorem of calculus part one. And what it says basically is that the derivative and an integral cancel each other. 
Basically, that's what the fundamental theorem of calculus says. The derivative ddx of an integral with the same x in the upper limit, and down here is some sort of number, a of g of t dt, assuming that g is continuous, then the integral and the derivative will cancel each other. And when they cancel, the only thing that's left is x and it sort of plugs itself into the place of t. Because remember, we talk about how t disappears after taking the, a uh, definite integral of it. So that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. It says when you have derivative and integral, they cancel. And then you have to be careful about little details. First detail is that the function g has to be continuous. The second detail is that that variable x must be up there. When the x is at the bottom, for example, something like this, then you need to flip it around by taking the negative of it so that it flips to the top and then you can plug it in. But then you end up with an extra negative symbol in front. Now, when the upper limit is not just x, but some function of x, then yeah, it still works. You can still sort of plug this in here, but also you must multiply by the derivative of that function in a sort of chain rule situation, multiply by u prime of x. There are variations on a fundamental theorem of calculus question, but the one we have here is the basic situation where the upper limit is just x. We want the derivative d dx of fx, which is d dx of the integral. ddx and the integral cancel, and the x get plugged into wherever t is. So this whole thing is just like that. This whole thing is a derivative. No plus c, just plug in x. All right, we're trying to find the maximum point. So first we want to look for the points where f prime is equal to zero. And then we check the signs to see if it's a maximum or the minimum. We're gonna solve for f prime equal to zero. First we note that this denominator is always positive. Whatever cosine is, you square it, you get a non-negative number. You take a non-negative number, you add one to it, you get a number that's at least one. So it's not gonna be negative, it's not gonna be zero, you don't have to worry about the domain. So in order to solve this, all we need to solve is the x squared minus 16 equal to zero. And that means x is equal to plus or minus four. You have two answers, we need to figure out if they are both maximum or maybe they're both minimum or maybe one is a max and one is a min. And we check that by doing a table of signs. So I have a number line and I have the two special numbers at negative four and four. And I'm gonna check the values of F prime, which is equal to X squared minus 16 over one plus cosine squared. And the way you check the sign is you pick a test number in between in within this interval and you check for the sign of that. And whatever that sign is, is the sign of the whole thing, of the whole interval. So in between negative infinity and negative four, I'm gonna pick negative five. In between negative four and four, I'm gonna pick zero is my test point. And over here, I pick positive five as my test point. X squared minus 16 is 25 minus 16 divided by one plus cosine square of X. 
I have no idea what cosine of negative five is, but I don't care. You know why? Because whatever it is, when I square it, it becomes positive. And then I add one to it, it's more positive. So whatever the denominator is a positive number. The whole thing is equal to nine divided by some positive number, so it's positive. I'm really not looking for a specific number. I just need to check the sign, so I don't need the specific number. The part between negative four and four, I'm gonna check with zero. I have zero minus 16 divided by some positive numbers, so the whole thing is negative. Over here, I have 25 minus 16 over some positive number. Again, the whole thing is positive. That means the function f itself is increasing here, decreasing here, and increasing there. That makes this a max, and that makes this a minimum. The answer is that the maximum is that x equals negative 4. Basically, there are three steps for finding max or min or other questions involving a, an integral function. You obtain f prime of x by using the fundamental theorem of calculus. And then you make a table of signs of the sign of f prime. And the signs of f prime will lead you to conclusion about f. All right, that's that. Hope that helps. Any questions, ask in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe for more contents. And thanks for watching. Bye.